So here is a little demo on why a view provides interesting summaries uh, without too much effort. So for that, I'm going to use this example of the database of political institutions from the Inter-American Development Bank. It's a simple data set that contains about 7,000 rows, so it's not that much. However, as we are going to see, it might be a little bit difficult to, to see. So when you go and see that data set here on the IDB's website, you can see that it contains all of these columns, many numeric and textual information. So we can call this to be like an initial um, summary of the data, but as you can see, it contains a lot of columns, and we have no idea how those columns relate or what it's in there. So uh, there are many things you can do in here. They even recommend like loading the data with pandas or things like that. And that's going to be interesting, but even if you load that on pandas, you are not going to get too much information out of that. So uh, as a matter of fact, we can check exactly with this one. So let's just go and download the data uh, here. And then let's put it in an IDB folder. And then when we go there, and let's see if I can do it on pandas fast. So I'm going to go into my desktop and then into the IDB folder and I'm going to open Jupyter Lab. <coughs> and then from there uh, we should see here is our file. So I'm going to start with notebook and I'm going for pandas, the typical thing that you do for this as PD. And then basically I'm just going to do a read as ESD uh, of our file. And I love this out of completion from pandas. And then I'm going to call that IDB. And I have a new data frame. And then after that, the first thing you can do is that, like the typical thing that you will see is that you can describe your data. And this is what you get. So that's a summary of your data. It's telling you what are the counts, the means, STDs, da, da, da standard deviation, blah, blah, blah. You can also say, show me the head of the data. And that is going to show you like the first columns, uh, but that doesn't really tell us you much. So you have here the different country names. You have a lot of these values. You have a lot of NAN values, if you can see here. You miss a lot of the columns because there's too many here. So that's not really going to help. So let's try a separate thing. So uh, the IDB uh, nicely offers here a uh, plot line plot log V, I don't know how you call that. Um, it, it starts by saying that Plotly has a limit of five megabytes. So that's interesting to keep in mind. Uh, this data set, I, I think it's less than five megabytes, so it might work, but it's still a very small uh, size. So when you go there, they tease you with these nice things, and then they show you the data, uh, they show you a table, and then they show, this is the summary that they give you. And then, a nice thing about Plotly or things like Tableau is that you should be able to come in here and select what are the different columns that you want to add. I'm actually not an expert on Plotly, so I have actually no idea how to uh, click to enter, um, how to select what are the different attributes. But what I'm guessing is that in Plotly, usually you should be able to um, just to select what are the different um, features that uh, you want to use for that. So, however, what I'm going to say is that if you just open that on Plotly, this is what you get. And then, if you're not an expert on this, then it's difficult to do anything else. So, let's try with something that I know better, like Tableau. So, what I'm going to do now with Tableau is that I'm going to go into the desktop. I'm going to get into the folder. Nice drag and drop. So, that's why Tableau is such a big feature or tool. And then it shows you an overview, and then it says go to a worksheet, and again, you face this thing. You find a ton of different attributes in here. Uh, the typical thing people are going to do is to try to create a map, so because they see these things in here, so I can actually add those things, and that kind of creates a map, and then I have to decide I don't know, maybe governance age is going to be my feature, but I don't see much, so I'm not getting much in there. Let's try something more meaningful. Maybe I want to see how many um, records do I have by country name. Uh, so if I actually know what I'm looking for, 
uh, like for instance this query, query that I just did, uh, that can be like a little better. So for instance in here, we can see that most of the countries have exactly like 40 something, 43 records. And then there are actually some exceptions as you can see here. But that's pretty much the summary that you get with that. So now let's go and try with Navio. So for that, navio.dev. And then in here, basically what I'm going to do is open the, name, the same file. And I'm going to open this in here. Let me make sure that I'm actually recording right. So it seems it's still working, good. So the first thing, first thing that you see when you open that on Navio is this huge thing in here. And then you also have this table that is telling you what are the, actually, the actual records that are in there. So the nice thing about Navio is that it's showing you all the data, all the records at the same time with all the different columns. So um, it's very complicated, as you can see. It contains a lot of information, but at the same time, it allows me to see a lot of patterns if you start paying a lot of, like a little bit more of detailed attention. Like for instance, you can see that all of these attributes in here if you hover over there, you can see the 1999s in there. And you can see that every time Gov3 RLC has a, a 1999 value, all of these other attributes also have that same value. The other thing you can do is that, for instance, let's take this one that seems to be like a more categorical attribute. I can click on the column and then that's going to sort for me. That is what's called direct manipulation. I can see that the main category in there is not available. And I can see that the most of the 1999s in there come from that one. In there. I can also, for instance, identify that there are some interesting values in here that still contain one of those. And I can go and select that specific range in there. I can even, if I'm uh, careful and all, I can even click on the specific value and get the, the, the different results for that one and filter by attribute, in this case I'm going to filter by range, and then when you do that, it's going to tell me I just selected 85 records out of those, and then we were looking at the government tree, I think, it's in here, and then you can see more clearly in there what are the ones that actually have that. For instance, these ones in here, you have like these records, you can see what is the ID, that is the 30A, 50 something, and then what are the actual attributes, and then if you want to Say, I only want to select this one, so you can also select those ones in there. They are actually showing in here. You can see that they are coming from the country Kuwait. And also here we have 12 records. Actually, we got one too many, but that one in there. So you can even keep on selecting in there, or you can come back in here and say, I'm going to try again, and then only include these ones. And then say, I got 10 records in there, and I want to export or entry. Uh, analyze those so I can actually come and export my data in here and, and start working with that specific subset of the data and go and check, for instance, why that data is problematic. So that was simply not possible on, on Tableau or Plotly or Pandas unless you know exactly what you're looking for beforehand. But you wouldn't have known that unless you had all of the context that Navio is providing. So that's why Navio shows better summaries that other 